morning boys and girls. I still have my coffee as usual. Nowadays most of the stuff I do is directly in the morning. So I'm going to talk a little bit, um, it's kind of a segue from another video I did on swim baits on some more specifics of why uh, swim baits, uh, big square bills, etc. And I really didn't write anything down that typically do, so it's going to be kind of off the cuff a little bit of the whys of the smaller versus the larger uh, swim baits and what I buy and why. So, first and foremost, here in Arizona, but bass are not the easiest to come by. Um, there's so many people that fish in this state that the bass are very pressured. So. To get a horse of a bass to hit, it's an accomplishment, and, and it doesn't happen as often as it really should. So, I compensate by throwing things that are so um, instinctually hit by them that they can't ignore it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the biggest uh, swim bait in the world either. So, uh, one of the classifications that I find that works really good here. Um, especially in the local community ponds, is the variety of multiple jointed that look like uh, panfish. This is a tilapia, this is a, a standard gill. And uh, believe me, there's a lot of tilapia in our waters. Tilapia color gets hit a lot. But I like them because they have that multiple joint. They turn really, really realistic. They look like just like a fish in our water. I don't know how they do it. And the funny thing is, these are not even like the super high-end baits. These are like the $5 on eBay cheap. You know, they, they did the mold and cut the pieces. Uh, it's a Kevlar mesh, so it really doesn't break. I mean, you could get a 20-pound fish on it and it wouldn't pop. Uh, the trade-off with these is they're, they're super flimsy this way, laterally. But they still won't break. Uh, I haven't gone through one yet, and I've caught quite a few fish on these. And... Um, they, they'll swallow. And I, I like to get um, things on eBay. And I, I also don't have my whole collection here. I have some in my car already. Um, but, you know, I really like some of the uh, ones that these people put the wraps on. Like this one is a uh, hybrid. This is a super fast sink. This is for, like, really deep water. But, again, it's got enough joints that it moves really, really good in the water. And uh, it's gotten pounded. I mean, it has literally just gotten freaking hammered because it looks so realistic in the water. And, uh, you know, outside of the water, they don't look all that special. But it's when they're in the water that they're just uh, a whole different breed. Now, I got a four-pack of these on eBay from somebody that wraps them and gets them as, as bare baits. <laughs> okay, that one, I have to show you this first. This was the $2 eBay special that looks like, if I get the hook off, come on now, cheese and rice. Just when you want something to happen, it's in it won't. There we go. This is a very cheap imitation of a rainbow uh, slash brown trout, kind of a general uh, trout design that has the uh, slanted body pounds as opposed to the square it moves really really well in the water but if you take it too fast it'll turn upside down it's a very slow working bait and it's got a, a medium rate of fall that was three bucks on ebay literally. so uh in the vein of those ones i was talking about i have a couple of different colors and they're all just a, a variety how does this happen to my tackle box I think I'm going to have to get rubber bands soon because every time I turn around, I got the hooks hooking together and I, I have to spend time to get these effing things apart. <laughs> and it's a bit perturbing, to be honest. So, um, this one is kind of like that uh, hybrid you would see in um, really clear waters, those really pretty sunfish. That's kind of this kind of deal. We have some of them in our likes, uh, but that's more of kind of like a Washington area that I've seen fish like that um, when I've been there. Of course, I've got the ubiquitous rainbow. 
These are very slow swimming baits. They're very slow rate of fall, even though they're fairly heavy. They're like four ounces. Uh, the density on them is really low for poured plastic, so they uh, sink really slow. So you got to work them really slow, which is an advantage for these, actually. You see how they have the upturn underneath? That keeps them up. So it's one of those ones where you can swim it slow and make it look like a fish that don't give a fuck, or you can sit there and pop like you you will on some of them. I really like that color. Uh, one of these baits that I had was lost. I, I lost it on the water, so I don't have it anymore. But, you know, they're only a few bucks a piece or, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Important thing to note with these particular ones is that they have different eye colors. This one has gold to go with the color scheme. This one has more of a silvery, but it kind of goes with, you know, the rainbow itself. This is more of a shad type color. Um, and it's got red eyes. I actually really like the red eyes. I don't know what it is about it I really like, but I, I do like it for some reason. Um, and I've caught a fair amount of fish on all of these, actually. And, uh, you know, they were just inexpensive. And you don't, when you're using uh, swim baits, you don't have to be ex absorb ex exorbitant with the amount of money that you spend. You know, people have this misconception that you have to spend a fuck ton of money to get... Uh, good swim baits and it's just it's not always the case the cheap ones work you know granted they may not last as long but think about it if you have cost to fish caught does it really matter i mean if you're going after trophy bass yes it matters if you're going after the trophy specifically absolutely that's at the point in time where you know you're getting like a hinkle and shad or trout or you're getting a roman made or uh, you know, you're getting a bull shad, which is my favorite swim bait of all time, by the way. Or any variant that's that's in the higher end. The depths, I hate depths. I just, I don't fucking like them. And I'll show you why right now. Uh, this is a Savage Gear, again, with the hooks. Jeez and rice, man. Okay, so this is a Savage Gear, uh, typical double joint. It's a slow sink, uh, but it's streamlined enough that even slow sink, it, it goes fairly well. It's got one teaser feather that comes with it. It's 20 bucks all day long. You know, it's got like the brown trout look. The foil really shines in the water. They love it. And it's like 20 bucks. You know, you go and you get a depth, and the shit is like 200 plus sometimes, depending on, you know, if you go on the underground or not. Uh, which, by the way, I really like. I haven't had a lot of money for for some time now, so I have not been able to uh, buy the higher end. This is an on Anamasu. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I do. The, the company's name is Realis. Realis makes some pretty good swim baits for not a whole lot of money. Um, this is more of like a mackerel, uh, shaddy type profile. It's a very slow sink, even though it's pretty heavy. It's like seven ounces. Um, really sticky hooks from the start. Really sticky hooks. That I love. Now, even though I hate the way these look, these hardcore ninja twitching glides, these things, they, they slam some big fish easily. They just have like this torpedo-y uh, shape to them that it moves really well in the water. Uh, but depending on how things go, you got to get replacements. These things just pull right out and push right in. Uh, they, they, they glide really well and you can pop them really really good and then this one I haven't used a whole lot but it's got some vicious strikes this is a jointed claw uh, from Gancraft and it's got the, the short, real chartreuse just whole like multiple color scheme going on it really doesn't look like any kind of fish in particular it's actually fairly fake looking but they key on that color and, and especially in dirty water, and man, will they pickle the shit out of this thing. Uh, and it's very streamlined. It, it goes very well. One of the custom ones that I bought, uh, which is from Angler Warfare. Uh, Angler Warfare makes some really good molded uh, swim baits. I got this uh, rainbow trout colored uh, bluegill. 
This is just another slow rate of fall. I really prefer the slower, ultra slow rate of falls. Uh, I just like that water column for like really big tankers that are just waiting for something to come by. And this one's been swallowed to th this one got swallowed by one that was so aggressive one time. It was only uh, a four and a half pounder. It got hammered so hard that it was all the way down in its gullet, and it took me like ten minutes with surgical grade clamps to finally get the hooks out. I saved the fish. It was bleeding a little bit, but it got back in the water. But that's how vicious they strike these things. And it's one of those ones that's got a massive amount of knock to it. Now, I'm of the opinion of big bass that they don't scare that easily, even though they're wary. Um, so I either have one or two ways to do this. I have come in like an atom bomb, uh, make shit happen, Make them go, what the fuck was that? So Because they are naturally curious. They have to go and investigate. Even if they're worried, they're like, that might be a week's worth of a meal. So they'll go investigate. Or be really subtle to where they see something and they go, that's an easy meal. Those two methods, they catch fish. They, they do, bar none, catch fish. I also like, before I get into my uh, last swim bait, swim bait... I'm not going to show my square bills, I'm not going to walk out to the car and pause this video and all that bullshit. I'm just not going to do that. So, I really like, when I have heavy gear, to throw really large scale spinners. Now, I got all these things on uh, loreparts.com, okay? This is a size 12 hammered stainless blade. I got super large scale uh Swivels that are rated up to 200 pounds on the rings, which is badass. And these are one ounce uh, lead-headed painted, nice big. I think it's a four-out hook. Um, I can't remember the name of these tails. I mean, I would if I saw it. But oh, Magumbo, Magumbos. Uh, they actually on the f the fucking tail. They're from Kalen's. Kalen brand makes really good plastics, by the way. My gumbo. So I got this one in this color, which really grabs attention, by the way, especially along rock lines on the shore. Good God, will it draw some strikes. And then I've got the standard, but I don't have a plastic on it. This one would work equally well with that tail. Sometimes I'll put a do-nothing, like a Cinco or, or a, a, a Yamamoto-type uh, do-nothing on, because this thing will vibrate so much with the size 12 that the tail will move. And it's retarded what it does in the water. I'm also really a big fan of Rebel. Rebel and Rapala both. Uh, but Rapala does, does not have these. Now, this is the problem with non-custom boxes. Okay, so these are, excuse me, Rapala. I always get those two mixed up. These are non rattling shad wraps okay uh, um, there's another name for them it's an official name I don't remember it this one is kind of a shad color it's got kind of the dark blue top orange belly uh, I fish this slow they vibrate a lot they have just certain motion um, that they just they get fucking hammered these things work really good along shorelines and then, of course, I've got, like, the more natural shad. This one is the best color from them in this series of bait that I've ever used. Uh, not for the biggest fish, but just for the most strikes. The uh, other one that I have, the one with the peach bottom, that one gets the biggest fish strikes. The biggest of the fish. I think the biggest one I've got on that one uh, was just over 10 pounds. And... Um, it's consistently, you know, four to six pounds on that. But by far, and you know, I haven't bought, um, I've lost a lot of the higher end ones that I've bought, and so I, I really have a tendency not to try to buy them as much anymore. Uh, but for the money, nothing swims better than a bullshit. Nothing. This is a nine inch. Uh, I want to get an 11 inch or order a custom 12 inch eventually. But there's just something about the the way, the purposely loose built way that he makes these, that they just, they swim unreal. There's nothing else that looks in the water like these do. They look so realistic that they just get pickled. Now, what I do with these though, is they take a scratch uh, tool, you know, an engraving tool, and I scratch these deeper, 
these lines and I paint them red like they're gills. I'm also going to start, um, I'm going to be getting RC paint because this plastic will uh, take it and seal it and uh, do the fins so that the fins are separately visible as well. They don't look like they're just part of the body because that, that makes it stand out. But good God does this thing get hit. I mean, I don't, I can't even explain to you the power of a fish when it hits a bull's head. Now, I've seen the, the, the Boyd's, uh, I don't like the Boyd Ducket ones. Um, the other ones that are made like that, I just don't like them. They don't swim the same. I go on eBay, I find these on occasion when I have the money, and it's on. Uh, that is one that I have personally gotten, uh, I think the biggest I've gotten on that one so far is 14 pounds, um, and it was the most vicious bass that I've ever had, and I've had, I've had dozens of 10 pound plus bass in this state in the last five years now. I took a hiatus from fishing for about eight years for the, the wife that I had last um, and got back into it. Now, my primary focus most of the time is on uh, pan fishing and catfish. I like big catfish. Small catfish, just I, I can't handle them. They fucking spike you too much no matter how good you handle them. A bigger one, you can lip it well enough that it won't move anywhere. So I tend to go for panfish and uh, catfish. But when I'm going for bass, it's almost always swim baits. And it wasn't, it didn't used to be like that. Now I find, I've got a number of square bills from all the main companies. Don't get me wrong. The big square bills, especially that fucking grenade from, uh, uh, oh fuck. See, I always forget the names of the makers. Well, I got a bunch of jerk baits from them too, but I don't remember the, the name off the back of my head and I'm not caffeinated enough apparently that grenade good god that grenade works good I've got um, strike kings I've got lucky strikes I've got lucky craft uh, booyah makes this really like super deep running like 40 foot plus uh, magnum uh, crankbait that I want to get and I've had to pause this type of fishing most of this year because my swim bait rod that I had it wasn't rated high enough to go to where I wanted to go, and the uh, reel that I had with it was just not suited to my style anymore. So I sold it, which was a good sale. I got plenty of good use out of that rod. But my focus is to be able to go all the way from those, the smaller Magnum square bills all the way up to like a 30 ounce custom bait. And the Dobbins 908 is a rod that will facilitate that and do it well. I have a Lexa 400 WN uh, still in the box that I have not used yet, and um, that's a perfect rod for it. But the guy that built my Ultralight Custom can build a rod like that for me at around the same cost, and to me, I'd rather have a hand-built rod. I know, low down customs, they're handmade, but man, are they expensive. And for what I'm looking for, it just, it makes sense for me to get an overbuilt rod. And the 908 still has enough flex that it gets that really good uh, load up for a launch. So I, I have to pause because I have to get the money up on top of paying for life in general because bills happen. You know, food happens, stuff like that. So I, I, I'm having to put it off until I can do that. But that's kind of a perspective on um, why I do the swim bait thing that I do. And I do a lot of inexpensive eBay uh, swim baits. But the Bullshad is by far my favorite swim bait. It just, it gets fucking hammered. And those uh, shad wraps that, that have that, um, what they call a Z-bill. Uh, those Z-bills, they, they go maybe 10 foot at the most, depending on the thickness of your line. Um, man. They, they just get hammered. There's just something magical about the way they move. They look they look like a fleeing bait fish, basically. They look like, hey, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. I know you're around. I don't want you to eat me. That's what they look like. And it works. 